Hi folks, hope you're okay today. I want to just talk to you about um, the Trinity, or especially in, in terms of the deity of the Lord. I want to just present to you an argument that Muslims use. They, they take the argument that Jesus came to a fig tree, didn't see figs on it, cursed the fig tree, and the argument goes, well, if he was God, why did he not know there were figs on the tree, and why did he curse the tree? What was that all about? Well, I read a PhD last week, and as I read that PhD, it was on the person of Christ. And it was on this issue about who, who, who Jesus is. And this is my response to the fig tree and those issues and how it connects with the person of Christ and the Trinity. Excuse me. As Muslims and Muslim apologists, what they do is they, they misrepresent the Christian faith. They say, well, how can Jesus be God if he didn't know there was figs on the fig tree? First of all, Jesus would have known there were no figs on the fig tree. He would have known that. So if you read the text, it might seem what you think, but actually he knew what, that there were no figs on the tree. He was teaching a lesson. But let's, for the sake of argument, he doesn't know. There are instances where the Lord's knowledge seems to be limited in some way. So we'll grant you the argument as Muslims. So then, if Jesus doesn't know certain things, how can he be God? Because God knows all things. Fair point. But when you say that, you're assuming you know the Christian position, and that's very dangerous because you don't know the Christian position on the person of Christ. What is the Christian position? The Christian position is that God, Jesus is God 100%. That's number one. The Christian position is that Jesus is God, uh, Jesus is man 100%. That's second point. Third point, that Jesus is a person, two natures in one. Third point. That's our position. Now you might say, well, yeah, but if he's 100% God and 100% man and he's a person now, then it's a contradiction because God and man together cannot be. But that's where you've made the mistake. Because when we say that God, Jesus is 100% God and 100% man and he became one person, we don't know exactly how that one person, the two natures, become one person. We cannot stipulate or know the complete essence of the person. And that's what you're doing as a Muslim. You're saying that you know the person of Christ in his essence and therefore it's a contradiction. But what, you, what you're doing is you're making... A logical deduction from something that we do not know. In short, it's a mystery. But there is biblical data. If you read John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, if you look at the history of the church, if you look at Tertullian, if you look at Athanasius, you look at Cyril of Alexandria, and, and, and then Sir Thomas Aquinas, and, and oh my friends, St. Anselm, what great minds they were, and, and even the great Luther uh, talked about this topic. You look at all these great thinkers, they all, to a man, said Jesus was 100% God, he was 100% man, and he was one person. And even these great minds struggled to define what that one person was. Why? Because it's a mystery. It's a mystery, folks. So you as Muslims can say, ah, Jesus didn't know, and he says he was God. It doesn't make sense, logical in contradiction. God cannot become man. Ah, 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 I say, wait a minute. The Bible says he's 100% God. The Bible says he's 100% man. The Bible shows that he's two natures in one, God, man, in one person. That's what the Bible says. I say, ah, 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 it's above your mind. He's a mystery. It's a mystery. So what you're doing as Muslims, you're blaspheming. You're actually not behaving as a Muslim. You're behaving as what we would call liberals. Liberals don't believe in God. They don't believe in the Bible. And they come at it rationally, critically and rationally and, ri and critical, rather than coming at it with faith. And that's what you're doing as Muslims. You're coming to the Bible critically and rationally and attacking the Bible rather than allowing God's word to speak to you. And because you will not allow God's word to speak to you, you are blind. 
You are blind with your logical pincer movements. Look at the fig tree, it doesn't know. Oh, how logical we are, but you're blind because what you have become is a logical Pharisee. Full of pride, full of self-righteousness with your logic rather than bowing the knee to scripture and seeing what the word of God says and humbling yourself before God and allowing the word of God to speak to you. So Muslim, don't be a logical Pharisee. But have the attitude of a little child and humble yourself and read the scriptures and you will find the scriptures of the Holy Word of God will nourish you and feed your soul and enrich your soul and, and refresh your soul. Let's turn to what? Psalm 119. Psalm 119, my friend. Let's turn to Psalm 119. Listen to this, my dear Muslim friends. Listen to this, my dear, dear, sweet, my dear, precious Muslim friends. My dear, sweet Muslim friends. Listen, Psalm 119, verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way that walk in the Lord of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep the testimonies that seek him with their whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were direct to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed. I will praise thee with the uprightness of heart. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. He loves the word of God and they enrich him. Psalm 1. Come to Psalm 1, my friend. Come to Psalm 1, my dear, dear Muslim friend. Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Here. Yeah. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. What shall he be? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that spring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And he shall be like a tree planted in the rivers of water. As you meditate on the word of God, the Bible, as you meditate on it, it will refresh you, it will renew you, it will inspire you, it will change you, and it will show you the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and it will show you the revelation of who he is, that every knee shall confess and every tongue shall say that Jesus Christ is Lord. Because the word of God is rich and powerful in spiritual things. And you will know blessings upon blessings as you read it and meditate upon it. And as you meditate upon it, you will see the Son of God rise out of those scriptures in a powerful way. That he is 100% God, 100% man, and he is two natures in one person. Now I just want to tell you one little thing. In the early church, there was the Arians. And Arius was a heretic. He didn't believe that Jesus was God. And he was heavily influenced by Plato, a Platonic philosophy, that said that God was transcendent and couldn't come into time. And it was because of that concept that God was transcendent and couldn't come into time that he struggled with the concept that if, he, if God is transcendent, i.e. Uh, all-powerful out there, how can he be a man? But the Christian faith is that God is transcendent, all-powerful out there, but he is transcendent... Sorry, yeah, what's it? Uh, God is transcendent, yeah. He, Christianity believes in God is transcendent out there, all-powerful, but he is imminent. He comes into creation and he is a, a God of relationship. He is an imminent God. And so we see that God uh, is said and uh, walked in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve. That there are these angels that came down who spoke on behalf of God because God is 
moving in history. That God called the prophets, he's working in history. He's coming, you see, to redeem us. He gives us the sacrifices, he gives us the temple. And they are all pointed to the final temple, the final sacrifice, the Messiah. But God is imminent, he comes into history, you see. Whereas the Islamic God is up there, the Christian God is up there, but he's also near. He comes to redeem us. And until you understand that you're lost, that you are broken the commandments of God, that you're destined for hell, that you cannot save yourself, that you need a savior to save you, you will never understand that Jesus is the God-man. Because unless he was the God-man, you could not be saved. Unless God gave you his righteousness, his holiness, his purity, you have no hope. That's why it says the just shall live by faith. Faith in Christ in the doctrine of justification by faith that we are declared right before the Lord Jesus Christ in his righteousness. He had to be a perfect sacrifice but also perfect in his righteousness because that is put to our account. My friends, come on Muslims, my dear, dear Muslims. He is 100% God, 100% man, and he is two natures in one person. He is a mystery, but you need to bow to the word of God. And when you do, it will refresh you and it will lead you to the Messiah, the mighty Savior, who alone can save you. You are a logical Pharisee. You need to repent and you need to turn to the Lord because your logic will not save you when you get to to, to meet with God. He will send you to hell. And you'll say, ah, well, I didn't believe Jesus was God because I'm logical and I'm holy and I don't need Jesus. I don't need his righteousness. And God will say, go to hell. You're a logical Pharisee. Rather than humbling yourself and submitting to the word of God, showing, uh, feeding on the pure word of God and humbling and and drinking in the truths of the word of God, that he is 100% man, 100% God, but he is two natures in one. Bigger than your mind, isn't he? Bigger than my mind, bigger than everybody's mind. He's above our, our minds. That's why Paul says, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So believe him, Muslims, trust him. You are dear to my heart. You are dear, dear to my heart. I, how, I, how I would long to hug you. How I would long to, to do anything for you, dear Muslims. I would do anything for you. I am so passionate and desiring your salvation. I am. I admire you so much. I admire your passion. I admire you. I admire you so much as a Muslim. I admire your zeal, but your zeal is without knowledge. It is misplaced. You are zealous for logic. You are zealous for your own self-righteousness. You are zealous for something that is false, not right. You need to be humble and read this and feed upon it. And meet the Savior. My sheep hear my voice, he says. Are you a sheep today? Are you going to hear the shepherd of your soul? 100% God, 100% man, two natures in one. It's above your brain. It's above my brain. Why? Because it was revealed in the word of God. God bless you.